video, I'm going to be showing you a new version of my channel name's design. So this is a pink and zebra print set. I have done one of these before and I can put a link to that in the description box below. Otherwise, for today's video, it is zebra print and pink. Like I said, the pink is the new Tulip Pink Pudding Gel from Madame Glam, which works really well in this set because it is a, the pudding gels are really thin and I have a lot of 3D French and that thinness allows for more depth to be seen. And then the zebra print's always fun and I'm a huge fan and I can't stop looking at these. I love them. I hope you like them as much as I do and I'll see you all next time. Bye. I'm going to begin by uh, squeezing my closing my nail tip all the way down to one length longer than what I intend to sculpt my nail at and then I'm going to sculpt the thinnest possible clear extension onto my natural nail as I am sculpting this this shape that I'm creating is somewhere between a round and an almond I really personally prefer the shape of an almond nail even more leaning towards stiletto but every once in a while I like the softer look and it to look a little less extreme and a little less harsh and that's kind of what I'm going for here something just a little softer so I'm going to be doing this particular shape applying a very thin clear overlay across my entire nail then removing the form very carefully after that I'm going to file just the free edge to make sure that it is exactly the shape I I want or very close file the surface of the nail if there's any thick spots whatsoever you want this to be incredibly thin and then I'm going to buff the surface so I'm going to be painting with gel paint directly on top of that and you want to have a nice smooth soft surface for the gel paint to adhere to now with some cover pink I'm going to be sculpting a little tiny nail bed on my thumbnail so that it's like half the length of what you would normally sculpt your nail bed area it can be a little shorter or a little longer whatever space you don't sculpt with your nail bed from this point is going to end up being what's your zebra print so you want to just just keep that in mind. After that has been cured, use a straight edge hand file to really get a nice crisp clean straight line on your free edge, then file it again, and then we're going to be using a white gel liner. This is also from Adam Glam. This was in there last year's Christmas advent calendar, which really you guys Christmas isn't that far along, so if you are planning to get an advent calendar, get excited. I'm so excited. I love their advent calendars. Anywho, we're going to be just creating a nice big white blank space for our zebra print. After you've done that, and make sure you do paint that white gel paint all the way up and over the top of the free edge of the white or of the cover pink nail bed area then you're going to paint your zebra print with the black gel liner this is a little harder to control with this particular brush just especially up and over the little bump so if you feel like you'd have more control using the gel paint the black gel paint and their detail brush or a detail liner or something of that nature you can definitely do that instead of using one of these like all-in-one containers I personally thought the simplicity of having it all together was worth the little extra I don't know caution I had to apply when you doing the zebra print here but with zebra print the other great thing is if you make a mistake it's fine because there's really no set in stone rules and if you want to know any of my whole philosophy on painting zebra print and why I love it so so much I do have a video specifically on tips and tricks for zebra print why it is a great thing to paint if you're learning line control and why I personally love it so much and I'll put a link to that video in the description box below after you've encapsulated your zebra print layer with clear acrylic, then you're going to file the free edge just like you did for the smile, just for like the smile line, the original smile line. And then we're going to fill in the tip with the tulip pink pudding gel. I'm using the applicator brush. After I've done one coat of that and cured it, I'm going to apply a second coat. I am applying these coats as thin as I possibly can. So the two coats really doesn't add any bulk whatsoever. Then I'm going to use more clear acrylic and encapsulate the tip. I'm going to make sure it's all fully encapsulated and then I'm going to leave this one to cure. After you're done with your thumbnail, you can actually, you can mix these up and do little bits of every nail kind of as you go. That's what I do. I do like some on my thumb, go back and forth. I'm now going to show you the middle fingernail, which is the one that has the horizontal wide stripe. So using the white gel paint, just like before, I'm going to be using that to make a very wide stripe right across the middle of my nail. After I have that white stripe done, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once again, we're going to be using our black striper to add the zebra print on this nail and on the ring nail where you're not going up and over a bump where there is any kind of, you know, unevenness, this gel liner in the brush altogether is perfect for painting zebra print. It's just going up and over that bump where it gets a little tricky and it'd probably get a little tricky regardless of what kind of brush and what kind of brush and paint system you're using. I'm now going to encapsulate this stripe. This is where you want to make sure that your stripe lines are as close to smooth and even as possible. If they are a little bit uneven, it's still okay. Once again, you know, you're human. Don't worry about it. You can file it later, but the closer you can get this to being really straight, really crisp lines at this point, the better. And it is a-okay if some of your stripes of black or some of your white sticks out around your clear encapsulation. That doesn't hurt anything at all. 
So if that, you know, if that happens, don't sweat it. In fact, make your stripe a little bigger in the beginning than what you actually want in the end so that you don't end up with any areas that don't have zebra print that should. Now I'm going to take that straight edge tan file once again, and I'm going to try to straighten out those lines as best as possible. It's a little tricky at the corners just because your nail folds, your nail side walls do get a little bit in the way. And so now we're going to take pink and I'm going to be filling in above and below the zebra print. And I was kind of silly on the tip area of this one because I didn't intend to actually fill in all the way to the tip because I want a negative space. And then I made a mess of my cuticle. I was just having some problems, you guys, with this particular nail at that moment. But we're going to fill this in best we can. You may need to employ a smaller brush, especially above the zebra print to get into all those corners. Once you're at this point, if you do want to have the negative space, I'm going to use a a little lint free towel to clear off the tip of the area tip of the nail and then go back through and straighten that line out so it's a nice straight line this time you do want a straight line and then I'm going to encapsulate the whole thing so I'm going to encapsulate above the zebra print just kind of smoothing that over you're probably gonna have significantly thicker enhancements when you're at this just sculpted phase than you would normally especially if you are somebody like me and you like really thin narrow enhancements that have just enough structure for them not to break um, some people like them thicker. They just prefer that look. I like them to be quite thin. And so they're always looking so chunky at this stage whenever you do something that's got uh, the 3D French style, just because it has to be thicker. That until you file it, I'm personally like, oh my goodness, are these even going to look right? It's always my, my moment of indecision. So we're going to do the pinky and the index finger to start with the same process where you're adding a normal nail bed. So not a really short one, like on the thumb, just a regular nail bed with your cover pink. If you have never sculpted any kind of French tip, any kind of pink and white, as you know, you'd always hear people say, and don't forget to file your smile lines for those two as well. If you've never done anything like that, I highly, highly recommend that you practice for one thing, because there's so much control involved, just like with the zebra print. Uh, zebra print and French tips, this design has everything you need to kind of get you started on the basics of line painting and the basics of sculpting with acrylic. So I believe personally, that learning how to sculpt a French tip flawlessly is kind of the building block of doing anything with acrylic. You know, if you can sculpt a French perfectly, you can sculpt anything. That's kind of my philosophy because it's it's tricky and it's, you know, you have to be symmetrical and even and it's got so much control involved. And again, just like with the zebra print, if you have never done this or you don't feel confident in this, I have a live class that's dedicated to acrylic, but I really go in depth on pink and whites. So... If that is something that you would, again, like to just get kind of the basis, basis down with, huh, it's really early for me and my words are being funny. Um, we are, I have that cool video and I'll put a link to that in the description box below. So now for the pinky, I'm going to take and just paint zebra print over the clear tip which actually is probably my favorite nail. I love just that clear zebra print. I think it is gorgeous. Then we're going to encapsulate that with some clear acrylic, making sure that all those stripes are nice and covered up. Any places that don't end up with acrylic, especially on the little the little wings of the smile line, little corners. If you don't get the clear acrylic encapsulation all the way up into those corners, you are going to have issues with your enhancement. It is going to be more prone to breaking. It is going to catch on things like your hair and your clothes. Uh, sweaters, oh, sweaters are horrible if you have a little catch on your nail. So you really need to, need to make sure that as you're encapsulating all of these layers, you get them all the way up into the corners while at the same time not getting them onto your skin, even in the slightest. It is a tricky one and it is something that definitely takes some... I don't want to say practice because it's not practice. It's more like um, eye for detail. You really have to check those things to make sure. So much like the middle nail, on the ring nail, we're going to start by creating that big wide stripe, but instead of horizontal, we're going to go vertical this time, add your zebra print, and then encapsulate the stripe, paint in the sides, both left and right, with your tulip pink pudding gel, and then we're going to encapsulate them. Because you're encapsulating over this gel, which doesn't have much of an inhibition layer, it's not very tacky, the acrylic slips quite a bit, and I didn't notice it as much as I did on this nail. Just so when you're doing this encapsulation, make sure that you don't press the acrylic too hard, or it will really veal little empty spots. So you got to encapsulate it kind of cautiously. Again, I really didn't notice it anywhere else but on that nail. And now that it's an issue, it's just something to keep in mind. So now we're going to go through and the fun part of any kind of design like this where you get a reveal is we're going to file this one into shape. I'm using a coarse bit e-file. I think this actually is an extra coarse bit e-file so that I can remove product on the fast side because we're going to be removing so much product. So just go through start filing, getting rid of everything. Once you are happy with the shape and you're happy with the way the design looks, move on to the next nail. You can get caught in an over filing sort of just state where you just keep filing and filing. At least I can. And with a 3D French, you don't want to file more than you need to because you'll lose some of your 
3D depth. So if these do end up being a little thicker than what you would typically wear them, but you have a cooler design, sometimes that's a better payoff. So just keep a balance. As you're going through, the middle finger is definitely my favorite one to reveal just because the so much pink went over the stripe and then you get to see that beautiful stripe coming through. I absolutely love this set. I love the depth of the zebra print. It does not show in the video nearly as, I don't know, intricate and as almost like wavy as it does in person, like wavy in a good way. Like you can see all the dips of the 3D French. I am so in love with it. And I don't usually have any negative space on my nails. And so to have that too, it's just like two things I love put together that I don't typically get to wear on myself. We're going to make sure all of these get five filed. This is, again, one of the few times where filing is fun. So make sure all of your nails are filed and beautiful. And then we're going to apply some gel top coat over the top of everything. And this is, again, another really fun step. For this one, not that the middle, you know, sculpting everything, painting everything isn't fun, but usually the filing is not the end of the art. The filing is kind of the beginning of when you get to start the art. So for this one, you file and you top coat and you're done. And it seems like it went really quick, even though it probably took longer than what a normal set would. It just seems like it was it just seems so fun and so quick and like, I don't know. I can't explain it. I love this one. I hope you guys are nearly as excited as I am and maybe just a little bit excited. That would be great because this set is gorgeous. I love it. If you guys decide to do a recreation, I would love to see it. And please don't forget to share it with me on Facebook and Instagram and I will see you all next time. Bye.